Hey, real estate agents. Welcome to the Weekly Closer. I'm your host, Jeff Underwood, along with my co-host, Joey Sampaga, the man with the plan. How's it going, Joey? I'm doing all right. How you doing, Jeff? I'm doing fantastic. We are the Real Estate Marketing Maniacs. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, We've yeah. got an awesome guest with us today. And if you're watching the video, you've already figured it out, I'm sure. We've got Russell Shaw with Realty One Group here in studio. How, How are, you are you doing, Russell? Good. Doing Russell. good. Good, man. I am so glad that you're here. You're going to share some wisdom with us, I know. Uh-huh. And I don't exactly know where we're going to head yet because Doesn't we're matter. just going to yeah. we're just going to get on the road and go. Mm-hmm. We're good with that? I am good with Why that. Why don't we start with, and a lot of people already know who you are that's going to be tuning into this, whether if you're video just tuned or in, listening. We're all still in the same names we gave you at the beginning. <laughs> so. You can rewind and uh, play it over again, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Why don't you share how long you've been in real estate uh, and 40 kind of years. what got you into I started business. just right at 40. I started in 1978. Okay. I went to real estate school, uh, started like December of 77, and I've been licensed since 78. Okay. My first probably 12 to 13 years in the business, I sold between uh, 17 and 23 deals a year, which was considered successful. Uh, but I lived from closing to closing, from deal to deal. Hmm. Uh, what changed and where I started my upward trajectory for real was deciding to stop screwing with buyers and becoming a lister. Got it. That yeah. next year I did 38 deals, and then for about three years in a row I was at 60 deals, and then I popped it up to 100, then 125, and then 130, and then next popped it up to 200 but it was a uh, it's easy to plateau but the yeah. the thing that is the thing uh now just like it's always been and nothing's going to change it is that most agents who have stable and that's a key concept a stable long-term success agent almost always is a lister has a listing based business Uh, One can say that every listing requires a buyer, but agents who are mostly working buyers are usually, they they always have a job, they don't actually have a business, and and they tend to be struggling from time to time. And people think there's the occasional exception to it, there really isn't. The the, the person, if they're at the mercy, because if you have a properly priced listing, it will sell regardless of the market. Uh, Period. It was just a a statement. I don't know how else more basic and fundamental it can get. If you have a listing like, like say, 2008, you go, well, we used the comps and it didn't sell. Well, obviously, the comps weren't good or in a declining (laughs) market. I mean, but the point is, if you have a properly priced listing, it's going to sell. And if you have a listing that's not selling and it's it's in the MLS and it's on lockbox, and someone could see it if they wanted to, and it's not selling, it's because it's overpriced. Yeah. If you're getting showings but no offer, it's at least 5% overpriced, and that's easy to see if you just look at the list price sales price ratio in Armless, right, right. is almost always about 97.5%. Yeah. It varies a little bit, but it's pretty close to 97.5%. And I think that's the same even in uh, the Crawford. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's where I got it. And all that yeah, we, absolutely. Armless, Mike, all that. Michael's data is impeccable. Yeah, absolutely. So when you look at that, so if you were within 2.5% of the price, it's already sold. So if you're not, you're at least 5% overpriced if you're getting showings and no offer. If you're not getting showings, you're at least 10% overpriced. You can go, it worked out only 95 Okay, I'm wrong, it wasn't 10 But my point is, if yeah. you have a properly priced listing, it will sell. It will sell. And all of this stuff about the latest thing and this brand new deal and that brand new deal, it's mostly nonsense. Uh, the internet is never going to make an agent successful, period. The internet is a fabulous way for getting buyer leads. The internet has not changed the number of homes that sell, like in all of what all, Zillow's, number one in search. Number one, they own real estate search. Sure. Yeah. Uh, mostly because of the people who used to run Realtor.com and the stupid idiots that run the National Association of Realtors. <laughs> um, the yeah. But the truth is, if they had done what they could have done and knew what they were doing instead of being buffoons, 
uh, Realtor.com would have simply owned search. The idea that someone could take it away from them only screams out how idiotically it was handled. Uh, Got it. If you look at Zillow and you go, aren't they almost always wrong? Yeah. With the books they print, with the <laughs> they spew, it's just gibberish. Yeah. But they own search, Absolutely. period. They yes. have more search than all the other real estate signs, yep. uh, sites combined. So you say, well, does they change how many houses sold? Nope. What they've changed is who sells them. That's all that's changed. That's not a bad thing, but if you want to work buyers forever, then stuff like internet leads is a fantastic thing. Yeah. If you're interested in listings and you're depending on the internet, you're going to starve to death. Yeah, uh, That's not how you get them. So you, you were a buyer's agent for quite a while and then yeah. decided, so was it a a mind shift that has to take place yes. to say, you know what, this is the direction I'm going. Yes, and I'll, and I'll tell you what it has in common. You can use the same business cards. The license you have with the Arizona Department of Real Estate stays the same. Mm -hmm. uh, everything else is different. Uh, if a buyer's agent relies primarily on their ability to get along with people. So someone who's a people pleaser who likes people and it has sort of a social like you'll you'll like me I'm fun to work with as though this was relevant Can you imagine someone buying a car uh, going I sure hope we find a real fun salesman today I uh, <laughs> really hope but they, see the yeah. truth is they're not looking for a salesman to, to buy the car they're willing to tolerate the car salesman to get access to the car that's pretty much the same deal with buyers buying houses they're not looking for I hope I get a really cool salesperson no they're actually hoping they can have as little interaction as possible so they can get into the houses. Got so it. If, if I've been in the business almost 40 years. Most buyers would just as soon take someone three weeks out of real estate school as me. That's a fact. If that were not a true statement, new agents could never make it at all. But the fact that someone can come in the business, and they obviously don't know a damn thing because everything they learned in real estate school was just to pass the test and has no real relationship with what you need to know other than an acre is 43,560 <laughs> square feet. All the rest is like crap you don't need. You can lose your license for this. You can lose. I wasn't going to do any of that stuff anyway. Yeah, sure. So sure. It, it really becomes this you have to learn the business after you have your license. The things that you need to know to sell houses to buyers is so different than what you need to know to take listings. When you take, see, buyers are saying, a buyer's agent is saying, I'll do all this work for you for free. I'll be there when you want me to be. I'll take you and show you this. I'll help you. I'll guide you. Uh, and I'll do it all for you for free. You don't have to pay me a dime. What's not to like? <laughs> But let's say somebody with a key. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> here you go. Let's say you were going on a listing appointment, and let's just say the house costs three hundred thousand. Just for the sake of conversation, pretend you were going to charge six percent, and you were going to have a three percent co broke, and you were going to get three. Just for the sake of conversation, say that that's eighteen thousand dollars. You're going to have to have something you say to that seller to make them, because you're actually walking in going, I'd like you to write me a check for $18,000. That's from how that's how they perceive yeah. that. Right. So what are what's your value proposition? I'll put a sign in your yard. You can buy one at Home Depot for 30 bucks. What else? I'll put it in the MLS. Every agent, you understand? Right. So you'd have to have, so the difference is, you're now going on a, on a uh, it's no longer relationship based if you, you, you if you look deep enough you will find successful listing agents who aren't even particularly likable i know that sounds amazing but it's a fact okay i've okay. seen them around the yeah. country i mean you go that guy didn't even seem friendly or she's sort of a snotty person yeah but if she's perceived as competent it doesn't matter that's actually an interesting point to yeah. get Wow. So learning to list, the first thing, when I, when I talk to agents, and I've had this conversation with several thousand, they, uh, the, the, the thing, if you ask if a race, say, everybody, show of hands, who wants to get more listings? Everybody shoots everybody. their hand. Okay, and here's the question I ask. How many listing appointments did you go on last year? Hmm. Nobody has a clue. How about last month? Again, they can't guess. 
which screams out they don't know. They don't know what the, the ratio is for listings appointments to listings taken. Uh, when you hear crap like, I list 98%, no, you don't. No one ever has in the history of the world, and no one ever will. <laughs> the only way that's possible is if you were an REO agent and that business is gone. So mm -hmm. if you're going belly to belly, table, you're at the, at the table, right. you are all problems in getting listings or at the table or getting to the table. Anyone making the statement, they list 90%, is either a, a knowing liar or a nincompoop. They can't count. <laughs> right. It's okay. just not happening. Now, okay. the novel way we count a listing appointment in my office, this is so revolutionary, uh, they thought we were coming at a certain time. We drove over, knocked on the door at that time, and they let us in. It counts as an appointment. If you didn't walk out with a signed listing, it's still an appointment. And unless you have some ego-based stat like, well, no, I take it. If No, no, no. You either did take it or you yeah. didn't take it. And the reason for that is this, all problems in getting listings are either at the table or getting to the table. So if you are hearing me right now and you've been on less than 50, that's 5-0 listing appointments, you have a crappy presentation and it's presentation-based. It's not relationship-based. Taking working buyers is relationship-based. Getting hmm. listings is presentation-based. And it's a different yeah. form of selling. It's completely different. It literally is completely different. We're driving buyers around. If you like them, it's kind of like a party. Sure. But taking yeah. listings is not like a party. It's lonely work. I'm serious. Yeah. I've talked to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of agents. Well, you know, I don't really like listings. I like buyers better. That's them saying, I never learned how to list. And the biggest problem most agents have in learning to list is making the rather idiotic assumption that they already know. So you won't try to learn. If you think there's nothing to learn, you won't try to learn it. If yeah. you think you already know it, you won't try to learn it. Someone who knows how to fill out the armless forms and takes five or six listings a year does not know how to take listings. They know how to take the ones that are handed to them. But that's such a, you understand yeah, yeah. what, this, oh, yeah, this is sure. the most, if I were to say, what's the most important thing I'm going to cover today? Right there. In order to take a lot of listings, you have to learn how to take them, and there's only one way to do it, and all of the people selling crap to agents about use my amazing method, get this amazing brochure I'll give you for only whatever the, it, it's all crap. It's all crap. There's one way to learn how to take listings, just okay. this one way, and every, anyone who doesn't do this is teaching, may I say, because that's what it is. Okay. <laughs> it's just crap. The way you learn to list would be exactly the same way you learn to ride a bike. You could read manuals on it. You could watch videos of it. You could talk to bike riding experts. But eventually, you'd have to get on the bike with no training wheels and go, crap, I could fall. Of course you could. And you're going to. Yes. Yep. And so when a new agent, I, I can tell you my numbers... And this is, I don't think anyone's been on as many appointments as we have. If I took the 15 consecutive years prior to the run-up in prices, and we're back there again, by the way, because mm -hmm. the short sales and different, like the market skewed these numbers. Right. Right? Because what well, back in 2005, our qualifying question for a listing appointment was, what time's good for you? That's all we needed to know, because we don't need to know their loan balance. We just, whatever time they'll see us, that's good enough, go. When we were doing short sales, we weren't going to go until they'd filled out all the forms. So that changed it. But if I took yeah. the 15 consecutive years prior to 2004, and then again, we're back there now, our interviews, listing interviews, listing appointments to listings taken stat runs between 56 and 58%. Wow. I want to cover that again. Right now, it's currently right around at 57 points. It's just a hair under 58%. That would say for every 1,000 appointments, we take about roughly just under 580 listings. That's amazing. Those are real numbers. Yeah. They're not ego-based. You understand? Those are yes. stats. We yeah. go, 
How many times did we go to the table? How many listened? We if you're a new agent, you won't be that good. You'll have numbers similar to or about one out of four, one out of five. And why am I saying that? You say that's negative. No, I'm positive. That'll be about your ratio. But if you have a false idea of what you can do from some person going, oh, yeah, you can learn to list night. No, you can't. You're not going to. What if the seller is insane? <laughs> yeah, you want the no, listing? Right, right. I if, I, if I made a statement that 20% of the people, the population, is sort of a potential whack job, Two and a half percent hardcore loonies. What if the seller's psychotic? Do you still want the listing? What if the house is worth I don't know two seventy five and they're not going to list it for less than three fifty? Do you still want the listing? A good point. So a lot of good points. If you're talking about like a listing, think of them like bananas. They don't really have much of a shelf life. So if if you don't take a properly priced listing, what you have is an opportunity. For someone to call you up and start telling you, you know, a great idea would be if you ran an ad in the Wall Street Journal. Uh, that's probably how to get a lot of business. Well, it actually yeah. isn't, but my yeah. point is I haven't run a print ad in, I don't know, 20 years. No need to. Yeah. Hmm. So what would you say if, um, so if an agent really wants to learn what they need to mm-hmm. for listings, and that's really the direction they want to go, yes, sir. and they know that it's going to take time to build that uh-huh. up. Is it important that they have a good mentor? Is it important? I mean, how? Well, a good how do mentor they make can't sure? hurt, but what's going to matter the most? If, if I said I have a website, it's called number one homeagent.com. That's the word number, the numeral one, homeagent.com. It's my agent success site. I could make a sweeping statement, which is true. Everything, and I mean everything you'd need for success, is there. Okay. It's hideously poorly organized. It's not laid out well. But the content for everything you're going to need is there. Now, could someone read it all and still fail? Sure. Because what you're going to have to do to learn to list is go on listing appointments. Hmm. If you don't go on listing appointments, it's not going to matter whether you're given only correct information. Uh, you still have to go on appointments. Yeah. This is like learning to ride a bike. And the, the thing, if I'm mentoring someone, there's only one stat I care about, just the one. How many listing appointments did you go on this week? How many did you go on last week? I don't care if you took the listing. I, not at all. You go, why? Because it doesn't matter. It just doesn't. Okay. And, and if you have, see, what most agents have is stage fright with an audience of one. So to get past it, it is imperative that you go on appointments. Go to the table. Get to the table. Get to the table. And you go, well, I don't want to call on my neighbors because I don't want them or my friends. Okay, great. If you live in Peoria, get appointments in Mesa. Hmm. Hmm. I'm not joking. Wow. Okay. If you lived in Mesa or Chandler, call on people in Sun City. There's a reason I say that because you won't care if you get the, get the listing or not. And that's exactly the correct attitude for all listing appointments. I was just going to ask, what what <laughs> activities would you suggest that somebody do to get do to what? the table? Well, you could right? call, you could, like Zillow has anyone who's not listed who has their house on Zillow is practically begging for an agent to come over. Yeah. Uh, quite literally. You'll get some hardcore nuts that aren't going to list, but seriously, practice on them. Practice on any FISBO you can get a hold of. Practice on expireds. Uh, practice on real people. That's the key. Because yeah. you're, when you get the, here, here's what I would say. There's about 18 or 19 different objections that any seller could have about not listing their house with you. And I've had people, when I've said that, they go, I have the list, throw it in the trash. No, no, I have it. I throw it in the trash. <laughs> There's only one valid way to compile the list is you go on appointments until someone asks you one of those questions and you don't know what the hell to say. (laughs) That's a vital part of learning because, and there's no way to learn unless you're willing to be stupid at the table. And when you get smart on that question, you get one other one, you go, because whatever, when they ask you something, you feel like a dope. Mm -hmm. I have good news for you. You'll figure out something before your next appointment of how to handle that one. And 
when you've compiled the full list where you yeah. have multiple possible answers to every one of those objections, here's one, we didn't want to pay 6%. Just a little teaser there, because that will come up. <laughs> so if you get startled by it, if you go, my God, I never thought somebody would say this, <laughs> let me assure you they'll say it. They will. And if you don't have some handling for it, you aren't going to survive. Yeah. So how well you handle those 18 or 19 different things will be a direct, and then go out and talk to real people who could sell their home, that's going to make the difference between success and yeah. failure. And the good news is you can work buyers until you don't need to. It's not like you have to quit. Right. But if you don't learn to list, you'll always have this job, not a business, a job where you're at the mercy of the market. Yeah. And you'll mm -hmm. never have st real stability. Because if someone has a business that's buyer-based, what, especially if you have a single source for that business, that's begging to have it yanked away from you eventually because it will. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of great information. Yeah. So any questions? Wow. About anything Absolutely. I've so far? Anything. Well, no. So that's been great about listings um, and kind of the mind shift, the different, the different business versus job. I love mm -hmm. that. I hadn't heard, you know, I hadn't heard that before. Um, I got that from Gary Keller. Oh, to there be we fair. Go. All right. So. There we go. Um, we talked a little bit before we actually went live, and I, I know there's a lot of fear out there right uh -huh. now among agents with regards to, um, you know, these quick offer strategies yeah, yeah. that are out there, right? Um, you know, fill us in a little bit. I know you had a lot to say about it, but if you want to yeah, share a little bit to. about the uh, offer pads, the open doors, a little bit yeah, about well, that. Yeah, let's start with the one that had most agents spooked, Zillow's Instant Offer. Do I see it, see it changing anything? Nope. The only thing it changed was that the companies like OfferPad or Open Door have had to spend a small fortune to get a hold of the sellers, where when Zillow tested it, they made it possible for them to spend zero and be able to promote it. So I, I, my, my first answer is it will change almost nothing in terms of the mechanics of the marketplace. Those companies combined are doing like a couple, like two or three percent of all the business. But when you look at how much business there is, you know, in any given month, you know, it's like seven, eight, nine thousand sales. I, I wouldn't get too fascinated. You know, you're going, oh, like sometimes in programs like Broker Metrics or um, Teradatum, it has what's your market percentage? And what is your market percentage? If you were doing 50 deals a month, you're not a percentage of anything that matters. So it, I wouldn't worry about it. The thing with the instant offer, if you look at, oh, I don't know, let's take a guy like, say, Doug Hopkins. He can write a check to buy a house. Uh, OfferPad, and like I know for a fact, Open Door, they're putting hard money loans on the houses. With all that venture capital that's been pumped into that company, they don't have the cash to buy the houses. Hmm. So you have this sort of odd thing, and if you look at what they paid for a house, on average, just take their last 10 deals. You could just, anytime you could do this, look what they paid, like what, what it closed escrow yeah. for on the way in, mm -hmm. and look what it closes escrow for on the way out, and assume a certain percentage for repairs. And I go, how the hell are they making any money? Hmm. You find yeah. house after house where the difference between, at most it was eight or 10 or $12,000. I go, that, and, and so I go, that's, it's almost like nonsense. Hmm. So you people say, I lost a deal to them. Let, let me tell you a little secret about losing a deal to them. If you're not losing deals, you're not getting enough deals. Ah, that's a good people point, huh? will fascinate themselves like a fisherman with the big one that got away. If you want to fascinate yourself with how much business you're losing, let me tell you a new way to look at it. Take whatever amount you're currently making and then figure out how much you could be making if you did what you know you're already capable of doing, not if you got a new car or a secretary, just what the resources you have right now, and nothing changed except you start doing now what you could be doing, that you know you could be doing, and subtract your first number from the second number, that's how much you're currently pissing away. Hmm. 
right. And so don't worry about, oh, my God, I was talking to the seller and uh, they did the Zillow thing. What, what do you give a crap? I mean, seriously. I've had people like, I lost a deal to Callaway's. If you're not losing, de- if you're, if, if no one's batting a thousand. Remember one time somebody asked me, did it upset you that Joanne Callaway got the listing or Brett Tanner? No, they're friends of mine. If I'm not going to get it, do I hope somebody I don't know gets it? <laughs> Good point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, oh, no, I yeah. wouldn't want Kenny Kloss to get that one. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, Kenny's yeah. a good I, If I'm not going to get it, why would I go, no, I don't want Kenny? Get, you, no, that's, an, that's a really dumb view. Like, if you're not getting it, you're not getting it, and you're not going to get all the listings you go on. No one bats a 1,000. Right. Go on more appointments would be the correct answer. So basically, if you're getting upset because you lost a deal, yes, you're just not going after enough deals. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. And you're going to have deals fall out of escrow. I, I remember one time years ago, I was teaching, was part of a quick start program at the Phoenix Board of Realtors, and this was a long time ago. And uh, I said to the guy, to the audience, not the audience, the class, it was, I don't know, 12, 13 people. And I said, you're going to lose about 10%. Of the stuff you have is going to fall out of escrow. That about for every 10 deals you put into escrow, on average, one's going to fall out. And some guy says, well, I've never had one fall out. That's just being <laughs> negative. And I said, no, I'm positive. That'll be, your, that'll be your ratio unless you're doing something wrong and it'll be worse. <laughs> and I thought, but he, to he, he, yeah. I've never lost, I've never had one fall out. And I said, how many deals have you done? Three. Well, okay, awesome. But answer again when you've done 25 total, and then you're going to see that that's, that's about what the title companies have as a percentage that falls out. Yeah. So when you do enough business, that'll be your percentage. And it's not going to make much difference what you do because, like, the title companies aren't deliberately going, let's do all the work, let's open the thing up, let's go through all the rigmarole and get nothing. Yeah. They're not doing that on right. purpose. That's it right. just stuff falls out, and you're not going to stop it. Yeah. So. Wow, mind blown information already. I'm telling you <laughs> yes. right now, we've been going, we've been going. This is great. Well, let's go ahead. Let's go transition into the next sure segment. Okay, all right. Are you ready to get in the ring? Yeah, um, he is. You're gonna get in the <laughs> ring with the maniacs. You ready for this? <laughs> all right, all right. How about uh, and this is more of rapid fire. How yeah. about uh, best advice anyone's ever given you? Well, I guess I could say the best advice I've read. It wasn't given to me, but it was do what you're doing while you're doing it. That would be a successful person at any field. You could say basketball player, a professional athlete, while he's playing the game, is not, if he's going to be successful, thinking, I love my son, I love my little boy, I love my girlfriend, I can't wait for dinner. They're (laughs) focusing like a race car driver on what they're doing right then. If you're at dinner with your family, don't fiddle with your phone. Mm. Don't screw around with oh my god what if a customer calls it'll yeah. wait this isn't brain surgery we don't see if you're a doctor who delivers babies you might actually be on call 24 7 at times we sell houses it will wait till you're done with dinner absolutely so it, i would say honor uh the person you're with honor it, don't interrupt like if you're sitting there with your son be with your son yeah if right. you're with the customer don't answer your phone don't take your phone in i remember talking to an agent years ago if he was on a listing appointment he would take a phone call that was a sign call and he would explain to the people like well you'd want me to answer the phone if i don't want if i'm talking to i don't want them to do anything but pay attention to me yeah absolutely so well do what you're doing while you're doing it absolutely i've noticed you don't have your phone out on no so (laughs) i appreciate that (laughs) Uh, simon senek did a whole thing i don't know if you know i know the name yeah right yeah start with why and he he talked about and i have mine out because i have the little things going on here but um he talked about how your phone even if you put it upside down Mm -hmm. on the table is essentially telling the person you're sitting across from I may need to that pick you're it up not as yeah. important as what there this could go. be, mm-hmm. right? So make sure it's not even visible. Honestly, um, it's the kind of thing people get this, like everything's a big emergency. What am I, God? What if what if uh, the, the house has termites? What am I going to do? Probably kill the termites, I guess, would be probably <laughs> yeah. something along that line. I don't know. But there's no reason yeah. to interrupt dinner. Yeah. There's sure. no re- I mean, seriously, there's no reason to interrupt anything. It'll wait. Yeah. And um, so I think one, that would be that thing of, like, do what you're doing while you're doing it. Yeah. 
and whatever it is you'll make you'll be more successful at that thing absolutely absolutely no i agree how about a book recommendation well to cover what uh, just uh if you're thinking of the, the audience or obviously agents right so if it's whether it's a success or to build your business what would you the two most important books for real estate success ever written are both written by Gary Keller. Okay. Uh, if you asked me, I'm not with KW, but if you said, who's the smartest man on the planet when it comes to success for realtors, there's no question in my mind, it's Gary Keller, hmm. period. If I looked at which of his books is the most important, uh, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent, the MREA book, which is still the best-selling real estate book ever written, period, some people say, well, it's a little dated now. I don't care. It is the most important book. There's nothing about it telling you how to go get business, by the way. <laughs> so if you read it, if you're struggling to make a deal, it's not the right book for you. Uh, yet, it is the, it's a book on how to go from being an ordinary agent to being having your own business and making your real estate business a business. There were 15 agents in the book uh, who were quoted extensively. I was one of those 15. And something that most Keller Williams agents don't know is it, it looked like maybe Gary and Jay and Dave wrote the book and then just asked us each some questions and put little quotes with our names next to them and our pictures in the back. Actually, it was the other way around. They went around the country and interviewed uh, most of the top agents in the United States. They took the 15 that they picked uh, here in the Valley, like Bill, Bill Ryan was one, Mike Mendoza was one, uh, Don Zalesnik was one, I was one. They picked people that had, and this is a key concept, replicatable systems. Hmm. Yep. And what the book was really about, and all of the like, stuff like do this, don't do this, it was what the 15 of us had in common. There was a woman who works out of New Mexico. I don't remember her name. She had made the year they did the interview, when she was interviewed, her personal commissions that year were 4.5, just a hair over $4.5 million in commissions, her mm. share. Wow. And the reason I'm telling you this, she was not included in the book hmm. because she did not have a replicatable system. She had 87 clients, wow. all investors, and she wasn't taking on new ones. She only sold houses to and for them. Now, so she didn't have a system. Anyone, like, you get 87 clients, and well, that's not a system. But what we had in common, it wasn't like how we generated leads, but it was how it was processed and the different ratios and relationships. So if you want to go from being an agent to having a business, the, mil the MREA, the Millionaire Real Estate Agent. Yeah. Gary's newest book called The One Thing is probably the best book on goals I believe ever written because he goes through myth after myth after myth on different stupid false ideas about success hmm. uh, that establishes like people, well, if you have enough willpower, nonsense. <laughs> Willpower, like enough willpower, does not let you achieve a goal. Yeah. In fact, quite the opposite. I'm just using that just yeah, as yeah. an example. Right, right. Um, if you haven't had enough sleep, if you haven't had enough food, you're going to do and think stupid things. Let me just start with that. Yeah. Uh, so you've had, well, I, it's four in the afternoon, and all I've had all day is coffee. I'm so busy. I'm a realtor. I'm amazing. No, you're stupid. You should have eaten. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, and it, I think it, he even talks about... Um, uh, multitasking. Yes, right? it's, not possible. it's not it's just, possible. It's idiotic. So he takes these different things. It's The book's fantastic with regard to that. Uh, and that's called The One Thing. So if I was going to pick a book, it'd be The One Thing. And to get what is your one thing, I believe, for realtors, it's lead generation. And a lead is someone you've got a name, you've got a phone number, and you've talked to them, and you have some reason to believe you should talk to them again. That's a lead, not yeah. I have an email address. Awesome. 
Here, here, take the phone book. Here's here's yeah. a, here's ten thousand numbers. Give them all a call. That's not a lead, right? So right. anyway, yeah. so no, I hope I great. answered that question. Absolutely, yeah. thank you so much. My pleasure. I'm going to go ahead and transition to you uh, drawing a question from the mask. Okay. All right. We good with that? I'm sure. All right. There we go. Let's pick one out. Beautiful. Yep. Just one. What is that? All right. Velvet. Working this one here. Read that for me. It says, "Tell us something most people don't know about you." Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, I ran for governor. In 1974, really, uh, as a joke, as a joke, uh, as, as a joke, joke. okay, I'm totally joking. Uh, I had I had about 200 write-in votes, <laughs> but at the time I did it, all of the radio and TV stations had to give me equal time. Uh, <laughs> they've changed that law since then too. <laughs> Uh, but I, I, I had fun, and my campaign manager is now one of my closest friends, uh, Bob Bell. He has True West Magazine, but Bob used to have a show on KSLX, and I used to do a lot of stuff with Bob. So anyway, I ran for governor in 1974 um, as a joke, and I got to say whatever I wanted. And now I'm saying whatever I want on Facebook, uh, <laughs> and I'm attempting <laughs> People, I get uh, people all the time like, this is going to wreck your business. Actually, it's had the opposite effect. Really? Uh, okay. Yes, it has. But that's it wouldn't matter to me. It wouldn't change what I'm doing. Uh, like, I'm doing what I'm doing because I'm having fun doing it. And I'm amusing myself and amusing others. Occasionally, someone goes, I hate you for saying that. And I go, fine, but you're not going to get to comment on that re- repeatedly. So I warn them, and if they just do it again, I just block them, and I'm done. So it would be like someone coming to a live show going, I don't like your jokes. Great. Leave the club or don't listen to them. I'm not trying to enforce them on anyone. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. So. Wow. Well, I anyway. did not know that. <laughs> yeah. That was an experience, huh? Yeah. yeah. It was fun. It was fun. Well, that's great, man. Well, you know, the, the information you shared is, is amazing. Um, Gold. Wow. I think we obviously went a little over, but that's that fine. was because. Yeah. I've learned don't shut it off just because you have a time limit. Yeah, yeah. That's right. This is great. Keep rolling uh, with the information. So I feel like I didn't even talk that much. My voice is still awesome right now. Your voice is, you have an awesome <laughs> voice, Jeff. You have an awesome voice. I was thinking because I didn't have to talk much. Well, you, know? you just, you have That's an great. awesome voice. You have an awesome beingness to go with the awesome voice. So it's, everything's good. Oh, uh, and he has, my favorite word is awesome even. So. Yeah. It's awesome. It's awesome. His, your awesomeness uh, is awesome, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you so much for being my in, Russell. My this pleasure. Great. Uh, this is Jeff Underwood along with Joey Sumpah. And we're coming to you from Security Title Studios. We'll talk to you next time. Yes, take care. Good stuff. All right. Finished up. All done. Beautiful. Great job, man. Thank you. This was fun. So you shared a lot of things that I had not yet. Yeah, the Weekly Closer Podcast is sponsored by Jake Krabby, NMLS number 877141 at Academy Mortgage. Are you looking to buy or refinance a home? Jake Krabby is your mortgage professional. Contact Jake at 480-442-9291. Jake Krabby is a loan officer at Academy Mortgage, NMLS number 877141. State license for Arizona number 0920357, AZBK number 0904081, and New Mexico number 877141. Academy Mortgage Corporation, NMLS 3113, and New Mexico 01451. Call 480-442-9291. Address 15333 North Pima Road, Suite 205, Scottsdale, Arizona 85260. Academy Mortgage is an equal housing...